If you've been using your dedicated Astro camera for a couple months now, then you've more than likely got quite a bit of dust on your filters and possibly even your camera's sensor. And this can cause you a lot of problems at night. That's really what we're gonna focus on in today's video. If you'd like to follow along, you can see I have a very simple setup for this. I just took a white t-shirt, rubber banded it around the front of my lens, which I'm using for the demo today. And then I've got the camera plugged into my laptop and then the filter wheel plugged into the camera. Once you've done all this, and I've just pointed out the window, ideally you'd have this pointed at an evenly lit light source, maybe a computer screen or a TV with just a white screen on it, or if you have a clear blue sky, point it straight up at it. Just find a way to get it fairly well illuminated. It doesn't have to be perfect for this video, but just so you can follow along. Once you've got a very simple setup like you see here, then we can come back to the computer and today we're going to use the ASI Studio. This is a free download from ZWO. You can find it over on their website. I covered this in one of the earlier videos in the course. But once you have this installed, you can also use another application if you're more familiar with that. That's fine. But we're going to use ASI Image today. And the way this works, I'll probably do an actual video on this at some point in the course. But for now, I'm still using the ASI R Pro. You can see it automatically detected my camera and hopefully it will detect yours. Just make sure it's plugged in properly. And then we wanna hit the uh, little link button right there. That will essentially turn it on. From here, let's also make sure that the filter wheel up top is being detected where it says EFW. And it looks like it is pulling it up and you can change these. Unfortunately, I don't have them named here in the uh, program. I have it named in the ASI Air app though. If I remember though, I did L R G and B. And I think I did sulfur, oxygen, hydrogen alpha. And you want to make sure you actually if you're using the ASIR Pro, for example, go back to the app, make sure that these are all correct because it's really important that you know which filter is which. And if you get these confused, it's gonna cause you a lot of problems. Today, because it's just a tutorial video, I'm guessing, I think this is right. But again, I recommend that you double check these are all correct and they're in the right position, but we're good there, we'll just hit okay. Now over on the right, we have all of our different settings. Really all I care about right now is the exposure. I want this, since I've got that pretty thick t-shirt over it, probably one or two seconds. And then the gain is set to low, that should be fine. Now we have our preview button right here. If I just click this, it's gonna take a two second long photo and we'll see what we got. And you can see that looks pretty darn terrible. That's a lot of dust spots. And this is on the L filter of my lens. To prove that, let's swap over to a different filter. So if I click on the filter wheel button up top here, I can go down to my red filter. I heard it move. I'll take another photo. See how the dust patterns have changed? That tells me at least that this is not on my camera's sensor and that's a good thing. Well, uh, not for me anyway. It's actually gonna cause me even more problems, but that's our red filter. We'll go down to the green. That one doesn't have nearly as much dust, so that's good. And what I want you to do is just go through here. You can also use the ASI or Pro if you wanna do that instead, but for me, I thought this might be a little bit easier today. And just take a photo with each uh, image here. And then once you have all these photos, you can actually clean everything off and make sure you did a good job. This is kind of the same way I do it if I'm cleaning my DSLR sensor because usually we get dust on the sensor and that's what shows up in the photos. And it's always a good idea to have reference images. That way you know if you actually clean off the dust good enough or not. Uh, but let's say you actually wanna save this as a photo. What we would do, I think, is come down to capture. And to be honest, I've never actually used this, so we'll figure it out together. I think if we hit auto run here, yeah, this will work. What we wanna do here 
is just take a photo with each filter. Pretty easy. I don't know how you can see with the reds there. It's kind of hard to read, but we're going to do, what is it, like seven filters? Yeah. So these are all going to be, I think we did two seconds. And then we're going to just swap filters between each photo. And then we'll have one with each image. So we'll start off with L. We'll do R, G, B, sulfur, oxygen, hydrogen. Again, make sure that these are all actually accurate. I'm not really sure in my case if they are, uh, just because I'm doing this on the fly. For the repeat here, you don't need 10 frames. You can get away with, I would just do one. You could do two if you want to be safe, but one's good enough for now. And the main reason we're taking these photos and saving them is just so we have, again, a reference frame. That way, after we've, we've cleaned the filters, we can come back and make sure we did a good job. Because it's going to take us quite a few attempts, I would think, to get completely cleaned filters. All right, so we got everything loaded in. These are all light frames, two seconds long, with each of the filters. And you could potentially even take longer with the narrow band because what you'll see happen is that if I swap over to the hydrogen alpha filter, it should be a lot darker because it's narrow band. There's not nearly as much light. So let's try that. Yeah. See how much darker? I mean, it's more grainy, which means we didn't capture nearly as much light. So for the narrow band filters, actually, you probably want to go five seconds maybe even longer. So there's five, that's still pretty grainy. Let's try 10. I'm glad I thought of that because uh, when you have all that grain there, it's gonna obscure the dust patterns and you're not gonna be able to see what you're doing nearly as well. And it looks like I think once this loads up, 10 is okay, but that really goes to show you just how narrow the amount of light you're capturing is compared to the LRGB filters. So that was hydrogen alpha. I might even push it to like 15. Uh, if yeah, you can go to custom and put 15, for example. So now that we know that let's come back to our list here. And for the narrow band, I'm actually going to do, I guess I won't let you put in custom. We'll do 10 for now. Should be fine. There we go. So we have relatively short exposures for LRGB and then much longer for our narrow band. If you've done all that, I would think all we have to do is hit start, and it's gonna save it in this case in my documents. And I can hear it switching filters between each image. Now the problem we have here is that we have all these dark corners and things like that. That's because I'm kind of just pointed up at a cloudy sky, partly cloudy, and also it's not evenly lit at all. That's why I stressed earlier that you really get a nice evenly lit light source to illuminate the front of your lens and get a lot of light in there. That way you don't have these big dark areas that might obscure the dust spots in the photo because you can see obviously if you have dark on white, it's gonna show up a lot better. All right, so it looks like it's all finished. We can close out of here and I'm gonna click that button. There we go we have all of our files. Unfortunately, it looks like it saved them as fit files, which are not easily opened. If you're a photographer like me and you don't necessarily have uh, specific astrophotography applications. And I think the easiest way is if we just open those up in Deep Sky Stacker. That's the only way I really know how at this point. So if we go to open picture files, it was under documents, I think. And I'm just going to load them all up. Then if we click on it, move the midpoint up here in the left till we can actually see what's going on. And it's pretty hard to see. There's not a lot of contrast there, but uh, maybe if we do increase the contrast a little bit. And the way I'm doing this is I'm just moving these points around, trying to get them real close together. That'll add contrast. And now you can really see what's going on. That must have been the blue filter, it looks like. Here's the green. The luminance is completely blown out because that's a really wide filter. Listen, a lot of light. 
but there's the L. It's not too bad. And then we have our red filter. And again, for those of you with actual astrophotography applications, this is probably, there's a better way to do this, but for everybody like me, deep sky stagger works in a pinch. And I'm just looking at each one of these to get an idea of how bad the dust was before we get really more involved with this. Now what we need to do is disassemble everything, uh, remove the cover from our filter wheel, and then begin cleaning our filters. Now that I've taken the filter wheel and camera off of my lens, I can use my little screwdriver that came with the filter wheel and take off all these screws. That way I can get access to the filters. Now that I've taken the cover off, if you were to look very closely, you can see that there is a lot of dust on these filters, and that's just on the front side. We also have to get the dust on the back side where the camera is attached. So this is gonna be a two-part process. And for those of you who bought the threaded filters, you're gonna have a much easier time. All you have to do is unscrew these, and then you can clean them very simply. If you're like me though, and you bought the mounted filters where we had to screw them in and it was a huge hassle, I mean, you could spend the time and take them out and then clean them that way, but that's gonna be way too much work and I'm never gonna deal with that. So hopefully you have the threaded filters and your life's gonna be very easy. If you're like me though, I'm gonna clean the front end, take the camera off, clean the back end, and then at that point, we'll take some more photos. First, what I wanna do is just take a little air blower and then really make sure that I blow all this dust off. And you can see it, there really is quite a bit of uh, dust just flying off right there. Now, of course, when you're doing this, it would help to have everything upside down. That way the dust is falling downwards. I'm doing everything with one hand though, so I can't really do that right now. Uh, but that's what you would wanna do first, is just use a little rocket blower like this and clean out the front side of your filters. I don't recommend using canned air because that can leave a residue. So you're much better off just getting a little blower and just make sure you cover everything very well. Now that I've blown off all the filters with a rocket blower, I'm gonna grab a little microfiber cloth to wipe down the filters themselves. There's a lot of information on cleaning filters online about using different liquid solutions and cleaning options, but what I'm going to do is just make sure I'm using a clean microfiber cloth that I haven't really used much at all. You can also use, uh, they make special tissues that will clean the dust and things off without scratching it, but I personally just prefer to use the microfiber. Then what we want to do is just clean that very gently. It's also probably not a bad idea if you do some of your research on your own to again, find a cleaning solution. Now we're not doing this on a dry surface that might actually scratch things where if you have a little bit of liquid, that can help. Personally though, I'm worried about streaking more than I am the scratches. So I'm just gonna do it this way and make sure I just do a real nice job. Once I've done this on the front side of the filters, again, I'm gonna take the camera off and then do the back as well. Once you've cleaned the filters with a microfiber cloth, I recommend grabbing the uh, blower again, holding everything upside down, and just spraying everything one more time to make sure you get all that uh, remaining dust loose. Once you've sprayed everything one last time, now we're gonna put the cover back on, and then we'll clean the back end of the filters. Now that I've taken the camera off of the filter wheel, we can see the sensor right there. And there should be like a clear piece of glass in front of the sensor, you can kind of see it. And what I want you to do is just grab the rocket blower again and just spray that off. I mean, there shouldn't be too much on there. In my case, there's like one speck of dust. Just make sure that there's nothing seriously wrong with the uh, front of your sensor right here. For the next step, we're gonna head back to the computer. And what I've done is I've connected the filter wheel directly to my laptop via the USB cable and there's no camera connected. Now we'll go back to ASI Studio, Deep Sky Imaging. And from here, you'll notice there's no camera. What I want you to do is go up to the filter wheel button 
and then just start off and go down the list. Start with L and you'll actually see the filter move when you do that. What I want you to do at that point is grab your rocket blower, blow it out really good, then grab a microfiber cloth or a tissue of some sort and maybe a little bit of solution. Wipe down the back of the filter. Once that's looking nice and clean, we'll go down to R and it will automatically move the filter right where we need it to be. Just keep doing that, go down one by one until you've cleaned the back of all of your filters. Now that we've cleaned both the front and back of our filters, as well as our camera sensor, we're ready to finish up this process. Make sure you've reconnected everything and attached all the cables, just like we had at the start of the video. Now we're going to go back to ASI studio and use our deep sky imaging here. Again, you can use any application you want. You can even use the ASI or pro, but I thought today this would be the simplest way to demo it. Once we're back here in our ASI image, our camera's connected, so I'll hit the link button. And then at this point, we just need to take all of our photos again. If you come down to the auto run, it should all still be set from earlier. You really shouldn't have to change anything. And it looks good to me. So I'm just gonna hit start and it's gonna take all of our photos. At a first glance, I still see some dust spots. That's unfortunate, but it is to be expected. Like I mentioned earlier, I cleaned a lot of camera sensors and more often than not, you'd clean it once, you'd take a test photo, you'd still have a little bit of dust. You'd open up the camera again, clean the sensor, take another set of test photos. And it would take two, three, four, sometimes even five times to get the sensor acceptably clean. And it's no different here. Uh, the first time, that'll get the worst defenders off, but it's always a good idea to come back and potentially re-clean it. This is where if you had the screwable filters with the threads, you can very easily unscrew them and clean them really well. In my case, I can't do as good of a job because I have the mounted filters, or I guess technically unmounted. But now that we're complete here, we'll head over to Deep Sky Stacker and compare our clean and our dirty photos. So I'm gonna head over to Deep Sky Stacker and then we'll go to Open Picture Files. From here, I have all these different folders and I'm starting to get confused. So it's not a bad idea to really make sure you you know what you're doing and maybe even rename these folders. The first one though, that's when we started the video. That's gotta be my dirty filters right there. So I'm just gonna open up all of those. Then I'll go back to open picture files and I'll grab my most recent set and open up all of those. Now, if we look down here at our list, we have BGLR and then BGLR. That means the ones up top are dirty, the ones down below are clean. What I wanna do is click on, in this case, B, move the sliders up here until I can kinda of see what's going on. Notice there's this big splotch here. I actually saw that on the filter and I was really happy when it blew off. That's our B filter originally, and this is after cleaning it. It looks a lot better. I see a big smudge here and down here, but overall, that's noticeably cleaner. Let's do that again with the G filter. This is the original. And here is the clean version. And you get the idea. We're just going to go back and forth. We can do maybe H next. This one was a lot darker. I actually looked pretty clean originally. And then here's our H after. Thankfully, it doesn't look any worse. But once you do this and you've compared them side by side, make sure that they didn't get any worse. And like I said, more often than not, you will still have some dust on your various filters. It's not that big of a deal. And that's where flat frames come in because rather than becoming obsessive about cleaning these and re-cleaning them and re-cleaning them, you could just take flat frames and let the software deal with all this in post-processing. And there's already plenty of videos on flat frames I'd recommend you go watch. I'm gonna cover it very briefly today though because this is important, especially now that we've been taking images for a while and we are starting to get some dust. Very simply with flat frames, just like our bias and our dark frames, you generally wanna take these at the end of your imaging session or maybe even the next morning when there is some more light. In this case, I would use the ASI or Pro and make sure that my gain is the same as well as the focus uh, on my lens or telescope. Today though, I'm just gonna demo here in ASI image and I can't actually set the gain manually, it looks like. I'm sure there's probably a way, but this is really only my first time using the app. 
So point being, whatever software you used to take your photos, you want to use that to take your flat frames as well. The big thing is that the gain matches between your light frames and your flat frames. The exposure doesn't matter though, because if you're taking a 60 second long photo at night or five minute, if you try and do that during the day, it's going to just be completely white. You won't even see the dust. So you really have to figure out the exposure on your own while you're taking your flats. For me, it seems like two seconds works relatively well for the LRGB and then 10 or 15 for the narrow band. Again, that's just kind of a rough guideline. There's there's probably better uh, things to go off of, but it's really just going to depend on what you're photographing. That brings me to the second point with your flat frames. As I showed you, I'm just pointing out a window right now with a flat white t-shirt rubber banded around the front of my lens. That is not ideal for flat frames because I'm pointing out the window. There's even some trees I'm probably aiming at, which might be all these dark areas are. You need to point this at something completely flat and evenly illuminated. Maybe that's going to be your laptop screen if you put a bright white image up or a TV would work great. You know, if you have a big screen TV, put your lens right up against the front of that relatively close. Put the, you probably wouldn't even need the t-shirt at that point if it's completely white and then take some photos. Usually you want 15 to 20 photos per filter. That way you can stack them to reduce the grain because you are using the same gain as your light frames. Again, there's plenty of other videos out there that will cover this better than I can because I rarely take flat frames, but I'm probably going to start doing it now that I have some dust. Just to recap, the big things for flat frames are photographing a bright, evenly illuminated surface, ideally like a white screen or something. The gain has to be the same as your light frames from the night before, and the exposure can be whatever you want for it to be kind of a flat gray image. And you cannot use flat frames you know, six months from now, because obviously the dust patterns are going to change. That's why it's really important when you're taking your flats, you want to take them pretty close after your light frames because the dust patterns will change potentially even from night to night, but more than likely every couple of nights they'll change enough that if they're trying to subtract dust that isn't there, that's going to cause you problems. And that's really all I got for you today. I think I went on long enough. The big thing we showed you is that every so often, in my case, I only shot like three or four nights and my filters are already pretty dirty. Uh, out here in the desert, we do have quite a bit of dust. So it's not a bad idea to actually go in there and clean off that dust because that will actually prevent light from getting to the camera. Not a lot, but still something to do. Once you've cleaned the sensor and the filters, it's not a bad idea too to start taking some flat frames if you haven't been doing so already. For that, I'd recommend you check out some other videos. Very simply, just find a flat, evenly lit light source, point your camera and telescope up to that, take 15 to 20 photos, and then you can use those in Deep Sky Stacker. If you come in here, you'd add your light frames, then you go to your flat frames, and you can add those in as well. And make sure you're taking 15 or 20 flat frames per filter. So 15 or 20 flats for L, 15 or 20 for R, G, B, etc because obviously the dust patterns are going to change as you swap filters. Don't forget to do that. Fascinating story. Any chance you're nearing the end? All right, well, that's all I got for you today. Uh, looking ahead, we're kind of at a weird time frame where all the winter objects are now pretty much gone and the summer objects come up right before sunrise. So it might be a little while till my next video. I try to do one a week, but like I said, we're kind of at an odd time right now. So it might be a week or two before I get back to you. And we're going to do a lot more with some live stacking. And there's still quite a few topics I want to cover here in the dedicated Astro course. 